Hello, everyone, and welcome to Flowing Innovation um, back in Autodesk Water Solutions. My name is Juliana, and I work in marketing here at MicroGuide. And today's presenter is Tim, our applications specialist. Um, at today's webinar, we'll unravel the standout features of Autodesk's water solutions. Um, as usual, you can ask a question at any given point on the left-hand corner. You can ask Tim to revisit a step or ask any questions. And in the upper right-hand corner, you will find links to our social media website and YouTube channel. Um, you can watch all of our webinars there at the end, so you can share with colleagues or watch it on your own time. And we will be also sending the on-demand recording of this webinar. Um, so yeah, without further ado, I'll pass it on to Tim. Hi, Tim. Okay, good morning, thank you. Let's go, I'm sharing my screen. So mostly uh, this is going to be uh, talking and kind of showing pictures and going through the spreadsheet. But I do want to also, um, I'll take you into Civil 3D and show you uh, what info drainage adds to Civil 3D. Um, okay, so <clears throat> this kind of story of Autodesk Water starts a few years back when Autodesk acquired a company called Innovise, which was, you know, the biggest company in water software out of Portland, Oregon, and Autodesk acquired that company. And so now Autodesk offers the previous solutions and of course is advancing the solutions as well. So you're going to have categories here. You have rainfall and drainage. So site specific, we're talking about, you know, your sewer and storm drain design, uh, the pipes and the and the manholes, et cetera. And then the area drainage. This is more a little more regional. So you can take in all of the drainage from all of the sewer pipes in that, as well as uh, river systems, as well as calculating all the rooftops and the and the sidewalks, et cetera, et cetera, and making a single model of all that. <clears throat> and then we also have water distribution, which has all kinds of things like tracing, uh, tracing out errors in the system, et cetera. And then asset management. So for any uh, particularly typically like a city or county uh, that owns infrastructure. They own their pipes and they own their manholes, et cetera. The asset management helps them with that and does reports and uh, repair information, et cetera. Okay, so that's kind of the overview of Autodesk Water. So if, you're, you, if you've been using... Um, You've been using the Civil 3D as storm and sanitary analysis that came with Civil 3D, okay? Equal to that and really beyond it, but you know, to compare, you would compare that with what is now Info Drainage. That's the software that has an interface inside Civil 3D, which I'll show you here, okay? They actually use the name InnoVise still in, on the ribbon tab. I'm not sure why. Okay. But what you do is you do the part mapping, which you may be familiar with this from using SSA or Storm and Sanitary. Okay. But this is where you go in and you say, okay, for this pipe type in info drainage, is this part and size? coming from my civil 3D drawing. And so you make these connection mappings and then all the uh, junctions as well, okay? And then you can save those mappings to a file. Okay, and then recall those later. So once you set it up once, you don't have to set it up again, really, okay? 
So that's the big thing that you do here in Civil 3D before you would do the export to info drainage or import from. So, you know, if I've laid out a pipe network, then I would export to info drainage, take it to info drainage, make changes, you know, analyze it, et cetera, and then bring it back over to Civil 3D. I just want to keep this about like that. Um, some of the things that are particularly useful uh, coming out of info drainage, uh, BIM compliance, and that's part of what they're doing about being able to talk back and forth with Civil 3D, and then this idea of green infrastructure. But the one that I really have keyed in on is the is the sustainable drainage systems or suds design this is going to be things like um, rain gardens and and uh, green roofs and that sort of stuff that are used instead of you know the old way of drainage you do a big parking lot and you put in uh, drainage grates and you know, places to drain the water out, get it in the pipe, and get it off to the to the creek as quickly as you can, and that's how you how drainage was done. But nowadays, you don't want to do that. You want that water to remove, go off the site more slowly, to have a chance to be filtered through uh, materials that are in the ground, etc. Okay, so that's what suds is going to do for you. And then we've got this little picture here, the four pillars of suds. That'll be on the test, I promise. Okay. Okay, so you have info drainage. That's your site specific. I'm going to do this pipe run from here to here, et cetera, right? And then InfoWorks ICM, which is integrated catchment modeling. Okay. This takes into account the entire system, the whole, you know, all the runoff as well as, uh, you know, running it through the pipes calculates everything together. So it calculates from the planter, the storm drain inlets, whichever pipes are between them, et cetera. Okay. That keyword that at least their marketing says is integrated, being able to take all the different parts of the model, add all of their information together into this single model. This is just a picture of the city of uh, something in Dubai or somewhere in the Middle East and they have big water issues and they use this software to help them do their planning and design. This just talks about the couple of different uh, types of models that Info InfoWorks ICM supports. Okay, the 1D linked model, so you could take, you know, my pipe network is a link and I could connect that to my river or my creek or whatever that's a different type. But it'll add the outfall from one into the the run of the other, of the river, okay? Then a 2D runoff model, this will take into account terrain. So it does a mesh like a civil 3D, a tin surface type mesh as opposed to a uh, heck RAS, which does a grid mesh. Okay. This is uh, the meshes in InfoWorks ICM are highly accurate. So they're, you know, it's high resolution data. And then they have the integrated catchment model has all the systems, all the pipes, all the runoffs from the fields and the rooftops, et cetera. 
Okay, so that's the drainage part of InfoWorks. Then you have the water distribution. Okay. <clears throat> that's two products. InfoWater Pro, which is ArcGIS based, that runs inside ArcGIS Pro. And then InfoWorks WS Pro, WS for water system. So InfoWorks Water System Pro. And that stands alone, does not need ArcGIS. Here's a cup. Here's uh, the differences between the two, and, and really who within your organization would be wanting to use InfoWorks WS Pro versus who might want to use InfoWater Pro. So if you have a team of engineers, you don't need ArcGIS. You want to be able to have multiple people access the model at one time, et cetera. That's InfoWorks WS Pro. If you're kind of running the models as one-off type designers, you know, everybody else can share, can see what you're doing, but it's not an engineering team doing the editing, okay, then, and you don't mind it running inside uh, ArcGIS Pro, or you might even prefer that it run inside ArcGIS Pro, and that then is InfoWater Pro. And then there's water asset management, which is broken into uh, two pieces. Info 360 asset. So this is your water wastewater asset uh, management. The big one is this pinpoint and prior prioritize network assets. This part's important, be able to get your inspection uploads from the field. Then you look at Info360 Insight. This is what they call their digital twin. Um, so it, you know, you have modeled your assets out there, your real world assets, every manhole, et cetera. And that has been replicated then into a water or an info 360 model. So now you've got a, a digital twin of your real world. And as more info comes in from the field, et cetera, it'll update this. It'll give you, if you look over here, these are your uh, notifications of issues you should uh, take into account, et cetera. This uh, SCADA and IoT integration, Internet of Things integration, so that you can be connecting to, you know, your actual equipment, which I'm sure, you know, nowadays you've got your equipment comes IoT ready as well, a lot of it. Okay, and so you can access that through the Info360 Insight. Okay. And that is the end, all I had to say. If you have questions, shoot them at us. Thank you, Tim, for that wonderful presentation. Um, yeah, as you mentioned, if you have any question, you can leave them in the Q&A box. Um, also wanted to remind you all that if you want to learn any of these topics in detail, um, you can take a custom training with Tim, and we also offer group classes online. Um, I also wanted to mention a couple webinars coming up. Um, let me, okay, we have coming up on September 25th, um, Green Building, how Revit can be used for sustainable design. Um, then that same week on September 26, we'll have um, the Blue Beam Advantage Transforming Project 
workflows. Um, so yeah, we have the, the webinar registration box on the right hand, I believe. Uh, we encourage you to go and check them out and register. And even if you cannot make it, you will get the on-demand recording. Um, so yeah, if you have any questions, you can also reply to the email we'll be sending after this webinar. Um, so yeah, I would like to thank Tim for this presentation and thank you everyone for attending. Uh, so if you have, if, if we don't have further questions, um, I, I would like to wish you all uh, a great week ahead. So thank you so much. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Huli. Thanks, everyone.